Deserts, noodles, spices and aromatics, relics from another era, and out of this world scenery. Any of this appeal to you? If so, you're gonna love the next few videos on my channel because I've taken my very own journey to the west from where I'm living in the northeast of China right across to the northwest, to Gansu province. I've only ever been here once before, seven years ago, and I've just been itching to come back ever since. So here I am, I am back in Gansu province, and what a stunner of a province it is, even from the flight like looking down on the landscape it was just giving me all the eye candy every time i look out the window the landscape completely changes there's a phrase here in china called da and big nature and i feel like it's the best way you could describe the, some of the scenes you can find here in Gansu province i'm talking the grasslands the the snow-capped mountains not to mention the deserts you can find here but that's only the start of it Gansu is such a long and skinny province so from the north to the south the landscape is just changing everywhere you go but before we can get into the big nature we've got to get into the big city first. I am here in the provincial capital of Gansu, of course, Lanzhou. And this is actually my first time coming to this city, which is a little bit strange because most people who ever come to Gansu, they will have at least been to Lanzhou because the flights kind of land here and then you transfer to your next destinations from here. But alas, this is the crux of the issue. I never actually flew here. I took a train, a train across the country from Beijing. It took 48 hours. But basically that train took us right past uh, Lanzhou straight to our destination of Daiyuguan which is further north and it's a city next to the Gobi Desert. It's incredible. And I went there to live out my stunt woman dreams and be in a kung fu movie trailer. Okay, a bit of a backstory. I don't know if I've ever shared this side of my history with you guys uh, but I used to be really into martial arts and it all started uh, when I first watched Ip Man. I was really inspired. I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So I actually started studying Wing Chun and I did it for a year in Sydney. And then when I moved to Beijing in 2017 to study Chinese, I wanted to keep studying it, but I learned because it's a Southern martial arts form, you won't really find it in the North. In Beijing, there were no places practicing Wing Chun. So I started going to this martial arts academy I found online that basically trains actors for films. Um, so I was learning just such cool tricks and flips and I felt so badass but not only was I learning all these cool things I was making a lot of friends too and one group of friends actually invited me to come with them on this project to Gansu province where they were going to film like this teaser trailer for a kung fu movie that they wanted to ultimately film. So I went with them on the train, we went all together, it was actually quite fun. Um, then we arrived in Gansu and yeah, I was doing stunts, I was doing fight scene on suspended bridges in, yes, if you look close enough, they are Wolverine claws. Still to this day, don't quite know where this movie was going, what the plot line was going to be, but I'm sure at least a little bit of copyright infringement may have occurred. Um, you know, I was even jumping off buildings, like doing some pretty intense stuff. And it was, you know, this trip that showed me that, you know, Stunt womaning would not be the profession for me. I'm way too risk averse. So I switched to vlogging and here we are seven years later back in Gansu province, but this time we are here to eat. Life's funny like that. And trust me, you'll want to stick around till the end of this video because I'm trying one of the most interesting dishes I've ever come across. But before we get to that, there's something we need to eat first. I'm here in Lanzhou, so of course my first stop is what the city is most famous for, Lanzhou beef noodles. It's the most famous thing about Lanzhou because you'll find a place selling Lanzhou beef noodles literally everywhere in China. It's as prolific as it is iconic. Thinly sliced halal beef, chewy, springy, freshly made noodles, green coriander and spring onion onion, clear broth, white radish and a splash of vibrant red chili oil. It looks simple, but the process behind making this bowl of noodles is anything but that. For sure, pulling the noodles takes a lot of mastery, as Dad and I learned firsthand a few years ago back in Sydney. But you can't overlook the time that goes into making that flavorful broth there. It takes hours and hours to make, and it's the element that brings this whole dish together. Locals say that the soup tastes its very best right in the morning, so for that reason here in Lanzhou, this is a breakfast dish. So it's just past 7.30 and I'm here at Chenji Qingtang Niu Rou Mian where I'm about to have my first bowl of Lanzhou beef noodles in Lanzhou itself. They have a very simple menu, only three things on the menu here. Niu Rou Mian, beef noodles, Niu Rou, which is beef, and uh, Ji Dan, egg. It's worth 
worth noting that if you ordered the eight renminbi bowl of beef noodles, it comes with just the tiniest little bit of beef. So I definitely recommend you pay nine renminbi extra for some decent slices of beef. So once you've ordered, you take your little piao, your little ticket, and you come to this side where they actually make it for you fresh. Every single batch of noodles is made absolutely fresh. You tell them at the front what size of noodle you want. You can choose anything from extremely, extremely thin. It's actually quite thick and flat. RC. Dauphin la jiao. So we've gone for RC. It's a medium thickness of noodle. And I hear that's what the locals like to order. And wow, I know I asked for extra chili, but he scooped three whole spoons into my bowl here. Good lord, this might be interesting. <laughs> I've asked them to add more la jiao, but they, yeah, they don't F around here with the art. They put in three whole spoons of chili oil. But apparently this is nothing. I ran into a subscriber a few days later who told me... So as a local, the most bizarre, craziest thing I heard is, you know, people get more than 10 spoons of oil. More than 10 spoons of chili? Yes. How many do you have today? So I have probably five. Five? Okay. And that's normal. That's yeah, just that's average. Normal. Yeah, as a local, that's normal. <laughs> wow. Sounds like I need to up my game after all. There's so much chili in this that my radish has turned red. <laughs> Honestly, it's not that spicy at all. It's only a slight warmth in my mouth, so it's definitely not overdoing it. It's not unpleasant, but it definitely does affect the flavor of this bowl of noodles. It adds like this real smokiness, which is really nice, but because this is the most chili I've ever put in my Landro beef noodles, it's definitely a different bowl of noodles than what I'm used to having when it comes to Landro beef noodles. The beef is so tender, it's so thinly sliced, you can almost see me through the beef, <laughs> and it just falls apart in your mouth. Oh, it's so good. It's definitely a thicker noodle than I usually go for when it comes to landro beef noodles. But having a mouthful of those slightly thicker noodles feels so satisfying and I definitely think I'll be going for this more in the future. The waitress told me that when I get towards the end of my bowl, I can also add some vinegar for a more refreshing soup to drink at the end. And let me tell you, with that chili and vinegar combo, oh, that soup tasted so good. Another thing I love when you drink that soup at the bottom is you get that freshness and crunch from the coriander and the spring onion at the bottom. All in all, incredible dish from beginning to end, Lanjo. Your beef noodles do not disappoint. I have to say my knowledge of the city really ended with the noodles uh, and I know embarrassingly little about this city and it was only upon arriving yesterday that I realized that the Yellow River actually runs through this city. So definitely being alongside the Yellow River, my first thoughts are, wow, that is a Yellow River. It's almost a little bit disconcerting because you're used to, you know, rivers being more blue or gray in color, but this is full on yellow brown. I did some research and the reason it is so yellowy is because it picks up a lot of sediment in the lowest plateau, like near where it begins. And then it carries that sediment all the way through China. Keep in mind, this is the second longest river in China, the sixth longest in the world. And it deposits that sediment eventually into the ocean. And it's so interesting. I was watching these videos of where the Yellow River meets the ocean. And it's just so cool seeing those colors just collide. And uh, another cool thing about the Yellow River here is uh, we also have the first bridge over the Yellow River right here. It was completely in 1909 and before that there was only ever a floating bridge here and because this river was prone to flooding it would flood pretty much every year and that floating bridge would be destroyed so it was pretty dangerous so this bridge was much needed and it's still here until this day and you can walk along it take some photos very very nice uh, kind of heart of the city here it's also really beautiful when it's lit up so make sure you also take a trip at night so I'm currently walking over the Yellow River I am on Zhongshan Bridge and I am walking towards the White Pagoda mountain um, so there is a white pagoda at the top it looks like quite a climb um, I mean I could do that or I could visit some of these kind of tented areas along the river that people look to be drinking tea and I really like the vibe there. I mean, I could go right or I could go left. It's 30 degrees. I think I'm gonna go the other way. <laughs> I don't feel like walking up a mountain right now. So I found myself a chill little spot here next to the river where I ordered myself one of what everyone else is drinking here. It's called San Pao Tai. It's a way of enjoying tea with lots of other goodies inside. Although I wasn't sure whether I was supposed to put both these big cubes of sugar in there at once. Okay. So every person gets a massive thermos and you can keep refilling your glass over and over again and basically just spend as much time here as you like. There's so much, <laughs> so much stuff getting in my mouth. I have to admit for now there's not as much flavor so I'm gonna let that brew for a little bit. 
and maybe while we wait we can get stuck into this <laughs> i bought some fruit and i've been really excited to get stuck into the fruit here in northwest china because it, it, the fruit here is just crazy sweet. Actually, Gansu, literally the name of the province, has sweet in it. I have four fruits here. Uh, two I know and two I don't know. Um, so the first two that I know, they're both peaches. One has no fuzz, one has fuzz. It tastes like candy. And look how beautiful and pink it is on the inside. I mean, talk about color. Look at these peaches here. They both are so sweet and delicious in their own ways, but they have very different textures. This one is a little bit more juicy and more watery. And this one is just like a, it's just different, you know? At first I didn't recognize what this fruit was, but it turns out they're actually apricots. I have never seen apricots like these. And the lady I bought it from said that they're like super, super sweet. So let's try. Wow, very soft. It's got this pip inside and the flesh kind of looks like that. Yeah, super sweet. Almost like too sweet. <laughs> it actually tastes very peachy as well. Moving on to our final fruit of the day. It's another fruit I have never seen before. <laughs> my thumb just went straight in. I put some pressure and it just... Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Apparently I can eat this skin and all. Wow. Somehow when I saw this, I thought it was going to be really, really bitter. And now I reflect on it. You know, when you see green fruits, it usually is quite bitter. I mean, green mango, green papaya, but it is so, so sweet. Much like everything else we've tried, this is really case in point. The fruits here in Northwest China, wow, they are really, really sweet. It tastes remarkably like rock melon or cantaloupe. You may know it in your country. The only difference is the texture. It's um. It's a slightly harder than rock melon, but it is softer than an apple, for example. It's really, really good. I like it a lot. Look at these colors. Anyway, back to our tea. It has been brewing for the last five minutes or so. All of that sugar has dissolved, so um, I'm kind of expecting for it to be quite sweet. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'm really not sure. It's either not sweet at all, or I've just had so many sweet fruits that this just does not taste sweet at all. But really, it just needed some time for that flavor to develop properly. By the end of cup one, it was getting really, really nice. And oh boy, cup number two was intense. It's so weird. Like, I would have thought that the second brew would be less sweet because I've drunk out, I guess, all of the sugar. But the second brew is way sweeter, like doubly as sweet as the first. I'm not sure what kind of magic this is. But definitely I wasn't the biggest fan in the first few mouthfuls that I had right at the beginning. But this, you definitely need to take your time. So I feel like this is also the perfect place to do it. You know, you find your seat, you pour your drink, you just sit here for a few hours. To be honest, I have no inclination to want to move anywhere else right now. But eventually, after five or six cups, I had to leave to heed Mother Nature's call. So I eventually really needed to pee, so I left my little tea spot. And I've just been walking along the river after doing said pee. And I've come across this. Uh, which I was really puzzled by for a while and I ended up doing a little bit of googling and this is actually sheepskin It's like a sheepskin raft and it's the old-school way that people in this city would get from one side to the other or transport fruit and goods from one place to another and basically you can rent an experience of going out on the Yellow River on one of these sheepskin rafts. <laughs> I actually think I want to give it a go for one person um, to have a ride on this sheepskin raft is uh, 100 RMB. I did not expect my day to go like this, but here we are. Obviously, we're going to wear a life vest because I have no idea how stable this is going to be. And tremor. I'm also a little nervous because this river is going really fast. And it does pose the very real question, how do we get back here once we're swept up by the current? Turns out I needn't have worried. They've got a speedboat that they use to transport passengers and the raft a few kilometers upstream where they then plop the raft into the water next to shore and then we're good to get on. It's me and one other lady here. Hello. Okay, I'm coming. And then we were off. This was a great decision. This is so chill. The river is moving quickly, like quickly enough to like take us at a nice speed and to see some scenery as we go along. Um, but I don't feel like I'm in danger. And the only real thing this guy has to do is just steer us basically. And it's very quiet, there's no engine. It's nice. I like it. I like it. Hawa, hawa, hawa. After about 20 minutes, we arrived back at the starting point. Okay, by this point, it was about 3 p.m. and the sun was so, so strong. So I made the executive decision to go chill in my hotel aircon for a bit. I was on my way back to my hotel to rest and relax a little bit, and I've come across this storm. And it's a little bit of my hobby. I've shared it with you before, but I love just like reading the English slogan on these hats. 
sometimes you could come across some classics, like who could forget the C word on a hat in Diamantes that I saw in, was it Baoding or Baoji? I forget. Anyway, I've come across an absolute banger. I'm in love with it. Live, laugh, love, bread. Have a grand time. And I just felt like we all need to hear that sometimes. So it is dinner time. I know it doesn't look like it. It is completely bright out, uh, but it's almost seven. Look, let me show you the time. 6.49. Um, so fun fact, all of China is on the same time zone. And so here in the West, uh, the sun sets a lot later here. Uh, so we're gonna have uh, a little stroll through this night market, even though it looks like it's in the middle of the day. Uh, and this is a very famous night market here in Lanzhou. It has some really interesting specialties. Uh, one in particular, I, I do have my eye on, but I'm a bit nervous about eating it because it does look a little, it's out of my comfort zone, let's say that. Uh, it's basically sheep's head. Okay, from what I see, people, they're like really just getting into it. So just cra cracking it open and... <laughs> I'm not sure where to start. Maybe with the bottom? So I thought I'd start off easy with the tongue. Warm up. Let's try some sheep tongue. I like the texture. To be completely honest, I can't taste too much of the meat itself because that uh, chili sauce is really whack bang. It's really smoky. It's spicier than uh, the, um, the chili sauce I had this morning in my um, bowl of noodles. This is actually blowing my expectations. I'm liking it way more than I thought I would. Um, but to be completely honest, I don't know what it actually tastes like because that sauce is really strong. So I'm gonna have the rest of the tongue here without, uh, without any sauce. It's quite surprising actually because a lot of mutton especially will have that like really strong aftertaste and I'm really surprised by this because it doesn't. <laughs> it's actually really subtle the flavor of the meat itself. It's not too muttony if you know what I mean. Now I've warmed up a bit. I'm feeling confident. I think I'm ready to go in and try that brain. Um, I thought that the brain would be my most challenging but I actually think the eyeball is going to be. I've never had eyeball before and it looks a little, um... <laughs> so let's go for the brain first. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dip that one in the sauce. Let's try. <laughs> it tastes okay, it tastes fine. It's very soft. Very tender. I mean, that's what's to expect from brain. It's quite pate-like. It's not as it's not as flavorful as I, no, I mean, not in a bad way. I mean, it's not as aftertasty as I thought it was going to be. It's a lot more pleasant than I thought. Um, yeah, that brain is really nice. Okay, I keep having to go back to what my good friend Jasmine told me all those years ago: is that all the textures are in the head. Jasmine, I wish you were with me here right now. You would really love this experience. So far, all the textures. You've got that soft brain. That tongue, still I prefer. I think that tongue it was really, really nice. Um, now I guess it's time to go for the eyeball. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hit the eyeball, guys. This is my first time eating eyeball. I'm so sorry. I'm just really nervous. Um, <clears throat> 老板, can you pick the eyeball? Can you pick the eyeball? Yeah. I'm <laughs> gonna need some alcohol. I want to eat, then we'll drink. One bite. <laughs> okay, we can do it. Everyone is helping me out. Everyone's like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Okay, let's let's do it together. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, eco, eco. Fuck me. Okay, one, two, three. three. <laughs> Had before. Had before. <laughs> I am feeling so proud of myself right now. I've in many ways kind of overcome a little bit of a fear. Eyeballs for me as something I've always been hesitant to eat. I have a bit of an eyeball thing. Like whenever I would go fishing with my family, they would have to let me know when they were casting their rod so I could protect my eyes. And I don't know, even like seeing close up images of people's eyes or eyeballs are just a weird thing for me. So eating one, I have to say it was quite a challenge, but honestly, it really wasn't bad. 
the texture was actually quite pleasant. The taste was just like everything else I've had with that, you know, very spicy sauce. Um, the only thing that was a bit hard for me was just the idea, but I got it down. I feel really proud. I couldn't have done it without my new friends here. They were so encouraging. And of course, a little bit of beer. <laughs> wow. Well, now the hardest parts are over. Now I, I know that I can do this and I'm gonna pick apart the rest of my head and have me a nice dinner. Okay, well, that's gonna bring us to the end of today's food adventure. Thank you guys so much for watching. I cannot believe it is almost 8 p.m. and it still is quite light out. Uh, sunset here is after 8.30 p.m., which is just wild. So I'm gonna make the most of the light, go for another little walk around, digest my uh, my sheep's head. <laughs> wow, I still can't believe I did that. Um, but yeah, I've only just scratched the surface of the amazing things to eat, not only in this province, but in this city. So next week, I'm gonna be going deeper, seeing what other amazing things I can eat here in Lanzhou. Uh, and we've got lots of Gansu food adventures ahead. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like and comment and please, please, please subscribe. Do it for the sheep head, for the eyeball. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.